Good evening and welcome everybody to beautiful Siebert Field here in the outskirts of Minneapolis, actually in Minneapolis, the outskirts of the University of Minnesota campus, right outside of Dinkytown, everybody. As we get ready here for Ryan W. Young Productions, Metro Area Sports Rap Productions, and Hoochie Maguchi Productions of Minneapolis Professional Minor League Baseball. And joining me this evening as well, Matt, and your experience, you were here last time. What are we going to see happening in this game? As a lot of people who may have checked out the first broadcast just a couple nights ago. Well, I tell you, Ryan, tonight we're going to see a terrific pitching matchup. Tom McCormick on the mound for Minneapolis Loons, and Darren Knight on the mound for Brainerd Bears. Last time they met, Darren Knight came out victorious. Uh, he pitched six strong innings last time. Uh, had a three-hit performance in six strong, eight strong innings. Uh, the Brainerd Bears prevailed 8-1 to in that last contest. Indeed, last time we battled with the elements, and we're battling with them as well this evening. Overcast skies, time and time again, a big thunderhead which seemed like it would roll in, but then it parts off, but the fans are still here this evening. Minneapolis Loons are in the North Central League for minor league baseball. They are professionals. They administer everything as a professional team. On the mound, you see there Tom McCormick, 3 and 6 with a 3 10 ERA. And this should be an interesting broadcast. Gucci Maguchi Productions teaming up along with Metro Area Sports Rap Productions to bring you this evening's baseball game. A different atmosphere down here when you look at a minor league game compared to, say, a professional game. Man. Well, you know, I'll tell you, Ryan, it's it's a little bit more family oriented, I think, and and there's there's nothing better than the great American pastime played on real grass and under a real sky. I mean, the elements are something that you have to deal with when you're playing outside. Indeed, they are. McCormick will start it out as we take it around. What do we have for rosters? We look around the infield. Tommy McCormick is going to be backed up. Uh, Perez behind the plate. McCamey at third base. Boyd starts at shortstop. Oster's in the four hole, and Jackson is at first base. Wright is out in right field. Strong in center field, and Neath rounds up the Loons defense in left field. Up to the plate, and the Brainerd Bears coming into this one. No stranger to victory. The Loons and Brainerd have battled back and forth over the last month or so for that first place title. The Brainerd Bears at this point in time, two games above the Minneapolis Loons. The end of the season, just right around the corner. Actually, check that. The Loons are two and a half back of the Brainerd Barons at this point. With about a week left in the season, not much time left for the Loons to make their break on the Bears. This will prove to be a crucial contest. In the way, the Eastern Division rounds out at the end of the league in the North Central League. They've got an interesting road trip as well, uh, going up to Regina to end that out. A lot of people may not know that this league uh, has transcended the boundaries of the United States, goes up to Regina and Saskatoon. And from what I understand, it, it occasionally proves to be interesting crossing the border. <laughs> Different atmosphere up there as well. <laughs> A lot more sports orientated, not a lot of big league teams. And a, a different climate as well. <laughs> and this one's going to be popped to center field. And Strong comes up with the catch there. Strong's been pretty solid in center field this year. He only has three errors on the year. Nice grab by Strong. Again, what you got to like about this team, Matt, is the fact that there's a lot of players coming from this area, as well as some renowned people, of course, the manager of this team, Greg Olson, former Atlanta Brave, World Series. He's definitely had the uh, experience to guide this young Minneapolis Blues ball club down the stretch. Bernie Williams flies to right. Right is under it, makes the catch. Two down in the top half of the first inning. 0-0 the score here. 
And the Minneapolis Loons have Tommy McCormick on the mound. Tommy took the loss in a heartbreaker last Saturday, 8-1. to one. Tommy gave up four earned runs in that outing. Up steps Bernie Williams to the plate for the Brainerd Bears. He's batting 385 on the season with one home run and seven RBIs. Big strong right hander on the mound. Again, a lot of different looks you're going to see this evening from the pitching staff of the Minneapolis Loons. It always helps when your manager comes from the pro leagues. A catcher can always help adapt those young pitchers. As well as having a veteran like Juan Berenger. Exactly, on your staff. Adds a lot. And Juan has even been offered some different opportunities this season, including maybe some possible AAA. He's declined those to stay here with the Minneapolis Loons for the rest of the season. Of course, Juan Berenger of the local fame with Minneapolis, Minnesota Twins, the World Series hero from 1987. Who could forget the point? The hit to the glove with the point and how it offended certain people at the time. <laughs> Who could forget? We love him here in Minnesota. Though. Two outs here in the top half of the first inning. Minneapolis Loons and the Brainerd Bears. No score in the game. Williams drew a walk to, he's standing on first base. In steps the second baseman Waller for the Brainerd Bears. He's hitting 296 on the year with five home runs and 36 RBIs. Kind of interesting down here. One difference that this league may have compared to something like the Saints as we take a look around the ballpark. No alcohol down here. Not allowed at Seabrook Field. And of course that, that goes right hand in hand with that family perspective that the Minneapolis Loons try to promote. That one's bounced foul at the plate. Perez up with it. Pretty much a dead win here this evening. Uh, last time we were down here, you had a lot of battles with the weather. Nice. Should be conducive for hitters. And there goes the runner. Foul at the plate. And the runner will return to first base. The count remains at one and two with two outs here in the top half of the first inning. We're glad you could join us here for Minneapolis Loons baseball. I hear down, uh, as we listen down to the booth, some of the other announcers, this also being carried on radio. A chilly night here at Seattle, they say. <laughs> Not if you're in Minnesota, and this is expected when September hits. You've got to be ready for this type of weather. Jackson over at first. Takes the toss from McCormick. Not a real <laughs> pressure-packed move there from Tommy. He's just checking Williams at first. The runner goes, and it's fouled to the left-hand side of the plate. Nice turn. So, <laughs> Williams will return to first base. He's got to be getting a little tired here. On a brisk night, he could risk injury with those with that many steal attempts. Only three stealing attempts by Williams so far this year. Not a threat on the base pads. But again, these leagues work on techniques. Hit and run could be very profitable. In a lot of situations, you'll see a lot of clubs do that, especially in the minor leagues. The throw over to Jackson. That was his B move, I'd have to say. <laughs> he hasn't quite stepped it up to the A move, Tommy. There's the A move. Waller back in time. And there's a shot just over the head of the first third baseman who came. Neef up with it in left field. So 
Runners on second and first then for the Brander Bears. They got a little something going here against Tommy McCormick in the top half of the first inning. With two outs, Tom McCormick is in a little bit of a jam. McCormick is 3-6 and six on the season, 3-10 ERA. Again, one of the workloads for this team. Over 90 innings pitched so far this season. So Hatcher steps into the plate. And quickly runs the count to 0-2. Strikeout would be nice here for Tommy McCormick. Get him out of a tough jam here in the top half of the first okay. inning. How you doing? Come get. And a low pitch. Ball one. Runners hold. As Perez made a good stop on that. Ball in the dirt. You doing, Alex? Come back. You doing? Nice save. Again, McCormick maybe trying to dig in a little bit too much with his planter foot on that one. You almost see him aiming a lot of times. I'm sure people like Juan Baron Gare and those out of the bullpen. Just throw it in there. Just take your shot. Just play catch. Again, McCormick just in play a little catch. bind right now. Wants to get himself out. No. Runners hold. One. And two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top half of the first inning. How you do, Ace? You can do it. Tommy McCormick on the mound facing... Mr. Hatcher from the Brainerd Bears. There you go, babe. Hey. Go. Hey, Another sure ball in the dirt. Right Doesn't seem to be now. getting on top of that curveball the way he Not usually ball. does. Hey, make sure you go so, two outs, the runners will start with the full count and the payoff pitch from Tom McCormick. All right, one ace, base hit ball. Come on. Okay. Runners go, and ball four. So, McCormick runs the bases full. Full of bears are the bases. There are no room on the baggies left for any of them. Well, 24 walks on the season. That'll stat will move up a little bit for McCormick. Strategy, he's got to get this out right here. He's out of all the trouble. The Loons don't want to give up a couple runs here early in this one. Again, coming back from a couple games last weekend where they gave up runs. And those, the go-ahead runs, they were never able to get back into it. You know the Loons want to stay on top right now at this point in this one. So Tommy McCormick goes into the windup with the bases loaded. High and tight ball one, Tommy McCormick. For McCormick to be really effective tonight, I think he needs to work that curveball in with the fastball. And he doesn't seem to be getting on top of that curveball the way he usually does. Again, one thing to keep in mind as well, uh, one of the things that professional baseball is hurting with, and as well as it transcends with all baseball, pitching right now is not as strong in a lot of the leagues. And you're going to see that as part of it now. A lot of good hitters in these leagues. Pitching, still working on that. There's a good curveball. Fly towards shallow right center. Right is honored. He makes the catch, and that retires the Bears in the top half of the first inning. So, after a half an inning, Minneapolis Loon zero, Brainerd Bears zero. Thanks for tuning in, folks. My name is Matt Etzel. I'm joining the booth with Ryan Young, and we're coming to you from Siebert Field on the beautiful University of Minnesota campus in downtown Minneapolis. Tonight's feature attraction, we have the Minneapolis Loons and the Brainerd Bears in professional baseball. The way it was meant to be played on real grass. Indeed, a lot of things happening right now. This may be the game in town for a lot of people here locally. Those who don't have an opportunity to miss the America's favorite pastime, professional baseball right now, involved with the strike. A lot of interesting issues going on there. Back and forth. Nevertheless, if you have an opportunity, this is the place to come. Come watch some good quality baseball. As Matt has mentioned, it's all real grass under the sky. 
It's a beautiful night, and it's a chance to see baseball and not get so frustrated. I know there's a lot of people out there right now feeling frustrated <laughs> with the strike right now in professional baseball. Well, I tell you, these guys don't go on strike. They just play good baseball. Well, maybe not necessarily good baseball. They play baseball. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But it's real baseball, and you can't complain about that. What are your thoughts right now, Matt, about maybe some of the things going on outside of this baseball game in professional baseball? Well, to tell you the truth, Ryan, I, uh, I find that the players holding out, I guess there's two sides of the coin to this one. The players can be seen as, as the greedy players. They're making a million bucks, and they're sitting at home having their summer off when they should be working. But they're holding out for, for a better deal. They're holding out like the football players didn't a couple of years ago. The football players gave in. Yep. They let the scabs come in, and they, and they got pressured into a collective bargaining agreement that just was not suited to their needs. Right. And so it's just like any other business in my, in my terms. The baseball players are employees. They're not getting a fair, fair deal. They're not getting the profit sharing that they should be. They're getting a lot of money, but the money's out there, out there for them to have. So if I was to pick somebody to root for in this player strike, it would have to be the players. I'd say the greedy owners, are, it's just about time for them to give up their posh luxury seats and get down there and, and do some real negotiating and get the baseball back onto the field. But hey, that's, that's just me from the cheap seats here. I'm just an announcer. Pretty difficult to play baseball if uh, you don't have a field to play in and teams provided by a manager, though, isn't yeah, it? You're right. You're right. So a lot of different issues. I think this has uh, been one of the things that has created all the turmoil. Everybody's got their own opinion in Major League Baseball, and that's become evident in the last few months here. And taking the mound back to real baseball, the way it's meant to be played, Darren Knight takes the mound for the Brainerd Bears. He's 3-5 and five on the year. And stepping into the batter's box, as they call him here down at Siebert Field, smooth Sean McCamey. Had a chance to talk with Sean one of the first times that he uh, came on the team, that opening press conference when Greg Olson was uh, named to the team. Of course, Sean McCamey. Originally from St. Paul, a hometown boy. Last team he played with, Bakersfield, Bakersfield, and that's the Class A of the Dodgers farm system. So Sean coming back home. Yep. Said he wanted another opportunity to try to play here and extend that career, give his career another turn. Again, a lot of these people aren't looking at this as anything other than a, a career or a step in their career, a step in that ladder in order to give them more notoriety. And they're doing it, being here on television. <laughs> As McCamey runs the count to two and one, we're in the bottom half of the first inning. The Minneapolis Loons zero, the Brainerd Bears zero. Brainerd had a threat in the top half of the first inning against Tommy McCormick. There's a fly ball to shallow right center field. Williams under it, he makes the catch. Well, with the fly out there, McCamey saw he got above the ball a little bit, or under it rather. Sliced it, cut it, lifted his head just a tad, and he pops it to short center. Again, the Loons had trouble scoring until the late innings last time we saw them. As I remember last time you were the booth, Matt. Well, I'll tell you, the Loons are not exactly a heavy hitting ball club by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, their team batting average is, well, let's just say it's under 300. But somehow they keep in the race. They're only two and a half back of the Brainerd Bears going into the last week of the season. True. And they're a first-year team. All these teams are first-year teams. So Greg Olson doing a heck of a job with light bats, keeping this ball club in, in the game. And so Neef runs the count quickly 2-0 with one out here in the bottom half of the first inning. Swing, pop, foul down the third baseline. Got to watch out for the Culligan guy. Oh. All right, there's a 
<laughs> well, I tell you, that's one of those, uh, you don't see that in the Metrodome, Matt. No. <laughs> You won't see that in the Metrodome. You, you saw when he, <laughs> he hit the Culligan stand, he turned around to say, what is this doing here? That's yeah, paying the bills, fellas. And, of course, that Culligan tank will be used later on in between innings. Greg Olson, the manager of the Loons, climbs up into that Culligan tank, and somebody gets three shots to dunk him. And on a cold night like tonight. <laughs> He's not going to like that too much. Uh, he'll be frozen over by the eighth inning. And the set by night. The 2 1 delivery. Right away, ball three. So, one down, base is empty here. Darren Knight working out of the wind up. Swing this. So Neef runs the count full with one out here. Beautiful Seabrook field here at the University of Minnesota. Great field. And the payoff pitch. That'll remain in play. That shot, that's a little bit of trouble. Oh, no. Andre Johnson comes in to make the play for out number two here in the bottom half of the first inning. Number 20, first baseman, Paul. Jackpot, Jackson. In case a lot of people aren't familiar with Secret Field, it's located right behind the new athletic complex, right next door to the track and field complex, and it's right over here outside of Dinky Town, off the U of M, Minneapolis campus. Easy access if you'd like to come down and join the Minneapolis Loons for professional outdoor baseball. Plenty of parking. So Paul Action Jackson or as they like to call him down here, Jackpot Jackson, steps into the batter's box for the Minneapolis Loons. Quickly, the count is 0-2 with two outs here in the bottom half of the first inning. Paul Jackson is hitting 286 tonight. Good eye by Paul Jackson as he runs the count to one and two. It's a brisk night here at Siebert Field. Temperature at game time. Oh, there's a line drive down. That, that could be extra bases. Jackpot rounds first. He's coming into second with a stand-up double. And the Loons have a little two-out rally going here. Well, Jackson batting 486. Decides to come back and show a little bit of his uh, versatility. Right over to third base in the corner. The Loons need that. They need to jump up and scoring if they want to put themselves in position to win this one. Batting fourth, number five. Right fielder, Pat Zeus. Right. That'll be number 15 on the season, by the way, Matt. Uh, two baggers. He's a regular Chuck Knobloch out there. <laughs> So Pat Wright steps into the batter's box for the Minneapolis Loons. He takes a ball inside, not by much though. Minneapolis Loons batting 234. You mentioned earlier under 300. They're under 234 is the average. Yikes. <laughs> That's approaching the Mendoza line. <laughs> yeah. But also, number three for stolen bases. They will run. They're an active, active ball park, ball club outside of the batter's box. Some good pitching, some creative managing, and they're only two and a half back of the Brainerd Bears. So Pat Wright, the big right fielder for the Minneapolis Loons, with a 2-0 count with two outs. He had the green light on that one. Took a big, heavy swing. He was looking for that short porch out and left. It's only 3.30 down the line. Created a straightaway center and 360 to the power alleys. Siebert Field has comfy dimensions for uh, any power hitter that is with his salt. Foul straight back and the counters run even at 2-2. Two and two. 
Almost had ourselves a souvenir back here. <laughs> and folks, if you do come down to Seabrook Field here for professional baseball, you get to keep everything that gets thrown into the stands. Runner takes the lead at second. Just a little bit high. <laughs> Pat Wright is batting 247 this season. Slugging percentage of 372. So Darren Knight dealing with a 3-2 count with two outs here in the bottom half of the first inning. This could be his pitch. And the runner takes his lead. Oh, and he's called out on strikes. Pat's not too happy about that one. He's going to go back to the dugout and have a little chat with Greg Olson about that. Great call by the official. Hit the inside, made him tuck. He was already on his way to first base. Much to do about nothing. They got him down with the KO. So we have one run, uh, no, zero, no runs on one hit, no errors. One runner left on base as we go to the top half of the second inning. Raynard Bears zero, our hometown Minneapolis lose, nothing. Are you gentlemen ready? On your marks. Yes, sir. No! Of course, they're doing that wacky, wacky hijinks that they do here at Minneapolis Lynch Baseball. <laughs> it's the dash for cash. <laughs> They had that homemade wind out there. That guy just made enough to buy a beer. <laughs> the dash much, for cash. Much more than baseball down here at Seabrook Field, folks. I'll tell you, not many places you can go and run around for money. <laughs> You're at, a, at least not legal. At least not legal. <laughs> but again, kind of the conditions and the atmosphere they're trying to create down here. And it's kind of an interesting environment as well. As you take a look, right off to the side, you've got the warehouse district. Or not the warehouse. The industrial district, rather. <laughs> yeah, that's Thinking we're downtown on Washington Avenue. That's a pretty big warehouse. <laughs> we're right off of the industrial area. And there it is. Take a look. <laughs> Now, unlike the St. Paul Saints games, we don't have any operational trains that go by during the during the game, but uh, kind of adds to that whole working town mentality, having it right down here in the middle of the industrial district. Real baseball for real people on real grass under a real sky. I have to be envious, though, being from Minneapolis to St. Paul. I know a lot of people are going to say, don't say this, but the St. Paul Saints actually have a great skyline shot of downtown well, Minneapolis from over there. It's in St. Paul, but I wish we had that view over there, man. Beautiful view <laughs> of the city. Well, you're right about that one. So, number 32, Brett Beretti steps into the box for the Bears. The bottom through of the order. Beretti batting 291 so far this year. 446 slugging average. That'll put him in the mix. But at the bottom of the order, nevertheless, 148 at bats, and that's in the mix as well. Consistent players. Uh, I guess that's the difference between the Lewins baseball team and the Bears baseball team. Uh, Beretti, batting 291, he's in the bottom third of the order. Yep, exactly. He'd be the meat and potatoes of the Loons lineup. <laughs> but instead, he's just chitlins here. So Tommy McCormick runs the count two and two on Brett Peretti. That's a foul out of play. Sorry, we mentioned earlier the batting average for the Minneapolis Loons. Brainerd Bears, 279. That's their average. So they're hitting considerably better than the Loons. 
In about 200 more at bats. That's fouled out of play. The count remains at two and two. With no outs here in the top half of the second inning. There's a shot right through the hole. Seeing a grounder, McCamey and Boyce couldn't get to it. Neef up with it. So with a leadoff single, Brent Beretti gets things going for the Brainerd Bears. Daryl Card steps into the batter's box for the Brainerd Bears. Daryl the shortstop. That's what Beretti's looking for as that number one batter coming in, second inning, just wants to get on, get an opportunity to maybe move on the base pads, create opportunities for players behind him at the bottom of the order. There's a foul out of play. No balls and one strike, no outs here in the top half of the second inning. Card's hitting 200 this year. He's right at that Mendoza line. There's a weak liner down right field line, just out of play. That bounces into the track and field facility, just adjacent to Siebert Field here. So the count remains at 0-2. Beretti does have some speed, will take advantage. Only nine stolen bases on the year, but for Rayner, that's kind of big time. Only There's a snap throw back to first, Jackson. Only six players with more than five stolen bases. So they're paying attention to, uh, to Brett down there in first base. George Perez with a fairly decent toss down to first. Foul straight back. He just missed that one. Card is a 200 type hitter. Not a lot of experience, though. So he's only had 10 at bats. 10? 10? 10 at bats. <laughs> this guy belongs in T ball. What's going on? 10 at bats. <laughs> There's a weak ground here towards short. Boyce up with it. Over to Jackson for two. He got it. That's a heck of a play by Boyce. Great call. He got him. Again, you've that got That is two, a heck of a play. You've got a 200 hitter up at the plate. He takes a swing, lazily knocks it down, going the other way. And you're going to take a Here's look the there. They're going to flip it right over. Gets him just, just got in time. Him. Again, card, that's what happens. Lack of experience. Boyce to Oster to Jackson. And suddenly, there's two down in the top half of the second inning. So Tom McCormick helped out a li little bit by the double play ball. So in steps the pitcher, Darren Knight. Knight's not exactly a prolific hitter. In fact, they don't even carry stats for pitchers hitting. There's a weak liner to Boyce. Boyce opened it over to Jackson, and that's an easy out. So, no runs on one hit and no errors. For the Bears, to the As we go to the bottom half of the no second inning, it's the Minneapolis Loon zero, Raynard Bears zero. Well, I'd like to encourage everybody out there checking out these broadcasts to continue to support what is going on here. I encourage you to get in contact with the Minneapolis Moons. Come on down here, check out a couple games and see what's going on. Check into it for next season. A lot of group type rates available. Paul Pruitt and the rest of the staff will take care of you very well. If you have any questions, you can address them to either Hoochie Maguchi Productions or Metro Area Sports Wrap Productions, and we'll give you those mailing addresses later. We're going to take it to a break right now. We'll be right back. We're watching. Metro Area Sports Wrap Productions, Hoochie Maguchi Productions of Minnesota Minor League Professional Baseball. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. We're here at the beautiful Seabird Field in downtown Minneapolis on the University of Minnesota campus. My name is Matt Etzel. I'm joined with Ryan Young in the press box up here. It's a beautiful night for baseball. We're in the bottom half of the second inning here. Brainerd Bears and the Minneapolis Loons deadlocked at zero. It's been a pitcher's duel thus far. Darren Knight for the Brainerd Bears and Tommy McCormick for the Minneapolis Loons. Stepping into the box for the Minneapolis Loons in this bottom half of the second inning. Boyce, Strong, and Oster. Minneapolis Loons right now, number four in attendance. Total to date, 21,541. That puts them fourth. Of course, Regina and Saskatoon, the two Canadian teams, lead that off. The Witch's Tower. <laughs> Prospect Park. So, Jamie Boy steps in with a 333 batting average. And he gets a hold of one. That's to deep center field. On the warning track back, and it's gone! See you later, goodbye, adios, adios. See you later, goodbye, hasta la vista, baby. Goodbye, Mr. Rawlings. We're not gonna see that one in the next week. Holy cow, I stole all that stuff from somebody else. <laughs> Jamie Boyce. Well, it was time for Boyce. He said, this is my time. He connects firmly. He gets his first home run in the season. And only six at-bats, his seventh at-bat. You're looking oh, oh. at Boyce as a possibility of the future of the Minneapolis Loons. Jamie, Jamie Boyce making his presence known here on the Minneapolis Loons baseball team. You see here, he just got a round on it. Right over the middle of the plate. Takes a dead center. Deep center. 380 mark. Almost got it in the basket. <laughs> Of course, in the basket, that's worth $50,000 from the Liberty Carton Company. Hasn't happened yet this year. Jamie Boyce on the verge of $50,000 on that one. He was dreaming about it. So that gives the Loons a one to nothing advantage over the Brainerd Bears. And posts Tom McCormick to a one nothing lead. That brings in Kevin Strong. He's hitting 220 on the year. And Strong quickly runs the count 0-2. Kevin Strong in the league. Don't want to get him on base. A threat to steal, 19 so far this season. That puts him number five in the league. And the head of the Loons on base. Darren Knight was cruising right along before that fateful pitch to Boyce. He'd only allowed one, one run, or one hit. And was working quite effectively. He hit it. Kevin Strong will advance down to first base. Well, the Loons are liking this one. Greg's got to be looking at his chops. He's going to give Strong an opportunity to run here. Coming right back off of a home run. That's not what you want to see from the Brainerd dugout. Darren Knight appears to be shaken after that shot to center field. He's going to step off the mound a little bit, look around, check his calendar book, maybe call mom. So the Loons with a runner on first base and nobody out. One run already across in the inning have a possibility for a big inning this, this go around. So Oster steps into the batter's box for the Loons. Well, Oster's so new, they don't even have him on the stat sheets yet. <laughs> and the run goes, there's the throw on the second. Not in time. Yeah, and Kevin Strong is in with the stolen base. Well, I said before, they've got to stop Strong. He's going to be one of the strongholds. You get him on base. <laughs> You see right there, coming right in with the safe call at second base. <laughs> strong was one of the strongholds. Yes, that he is. 20 on the season now for him. So Mike, Mike Oster, as they actually like to call him around here, ball one, no strikes, no outs. 
And the bunt attempt, that's a good looking bunt right down first baseline. That will advance the runner now. Just foul, he picked it up on the other side of the foul line there. That's a good, that's a good play by Vanek there. That's a heads up play. Keeps the, keeps the runner from advancing. Real smart play. He had to wait till the last second. He wasn't sure. He put his glove down. He took F a chance. Figured he'd go for the sure out with the tag. So that gives Darren Knight another chance to dispatch with Mike Oster. Strong takes his lead at second. 1-1 one, one count to Oster. A little bit high. Behind the plate, the umpire, Mr. Ryan, and out in the field, Don Hendry is calling the plays. Oster originally from Richfield, Minnesota. He played for the University of Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, that looked like a balk, didn't it? It's a balk. That's a balk. Oh, we're going to have a little rhubarb here. I don't know. It looked like he started towards second base. Or towards, towards home plate. It appeared that he started toward home plate. He had turned. If you want my interpretation, it wasn't a very clever fake. <laughs> Um, it looked like a block to me. I think this is. Uh... Oh, we... that's not some real pleasant things they're saying down there. Oh, I think they're just exchanging phone numbers, want to get together after the game, maybe a beer or something. Oh no! Hey, wait a minute! What's going on here? Oh, yep. Umpires apparently saying it wasn't a block. He was had called time. No block out. being called. <laughs> so no balk being called. Greg Olson is none too pleased with that. Making it fun for the folks coming down to see a game. They want to see a manager yell at the, <laughs> yell at the umps. It's not baseball if you don't see it. There's a line drive down the right field, just foul. Strong will return to second base for the umpteenth time in the inning. To no avail, Greg Olson argues. He's going to lose that one. I don't know. It appeared to me that uh, Darren Knight had started towards the home plate, What's but that? no balk was called. What's ironical about Greg Olson? You may see him playing as well. He's been known to do that. Nice knock. Holy cow. Caught by Knight. He knocked it down with his bare hand. <laughs> You're not going to see a finer play than that anywhere, folks. What a great play. He doubles up Kevin Strong. Kevin not knowing what happened. Wow, incredible. Coming right back up the middle with the bare hand. He'll knock it down. Now watch this. The presence of mind. Strong. 20 steals on the year. Caught at third base. He'll make the double up to second. What a double play. Wow. You're not going to see that anywhere else but here. That is a fantastic play. That's worthy of ESPN if you ask me. That is POD material. Holy cow. Let's take another look at that one. Well, again, you see here, watch him just watch get under that. it. Ouch. Instinct. That's all instinct. That's all you're seeing right there. He's going to grab it in the glove. He has a presence of mind. And again, turns around, and there comes the shortstop for the double Fire kill. Fire to second. Strong. Hanging out at third base. So. Strong hung up to dry. Heads up play by Brainerd. Well, that changes the complexion of this inning. Suddenly, there's two outs, nobody on base. And Darren Knight works himself out of a jam. What they're going to do now is they're going to check to make sure everything's all right. After a shot like that, off the pitching hand. It's got to hurt. Who said these guys aren't going all out, huh? That ball was stung back up the middle. George. Wow. So that brings up George Perez for the Loons. Fouled straight back. And the count is 0-1. Well, George Perez is bat 150. Slugging percentage of 178. But he is a hitter. Welcome in there. 
but more importantly, learning from a professional catcher how to play the game. <laughs> you can't have a better teacher than Greg Olson, I'll tell you that much. So the loons, not a lot of luck in this, the late goings of this inning. Double up off a of second base. So George Perez steps to the plate with two outs, uh, one ball, two strikes. There's a weak grounder to first. Bannock up with it over to Darren Knight for the easy put out. So, one run on one hit. The home run by Boyce. Sorry for the lose by the second. Nobody left on, hit. no errors as we Sorry go to the lose. top half of the. <laughs> and they're alive here. There is a rolling train going by our field. Here. Okay, okay, you got me. <laughs> as I was saying, we go to the top half of the third inning. Minneapolis loons one, <laughs> Brainerd Bears nothing. Okay, so we got a live train. <laughs> it's not making a lot of noise. Though. Okay, that's true. That's true. <laughs> field with a lot of history here. Seabird Field, an incredible field. <laughs> okay, so thanks for joining us here. We'll be back in just a second with Minneapolis Loans Professional Baseball on the Metro Area Cable Sports. He graduated from one of the best medical schools in the country. Just follow the line. Finished in the top of his class. Take a deep breath. Walked into a built-in practice with no startup costs or equipment expenses. And remarkably, he hasn't paid a penny toward malpractice insurance. But that's not all he's got going for him. He's an Air Force flight surgeon. And to understand the stresses of high-speed flight, How you doing, he has to experience them firsthand. Hang in there, no problem. For him, all the money in the world can't match the kind of G's he pulls down. So if you want to practice medicine in a more stimulating atmosphere, no matter what your specialty, call 1-800-423-USAF. Aim high, Air Force. Welcome back to professional baseball here at the University of Minnesota, Minnesota campus. Welcome back to professional baseball here at the University of Minnesota campus. We're at Siebert, Siebert Field joining the Minneapolis Loons and the Brainerd Bears for a nightcap. Uh, the Minneapolis Loons took a 1-0 lead over the Brainerd Bears uh, by the benefit of Jamie Boyce's home run in the bottom half of the second inning, and that brings us up to speed. Tommy McCormick takes the mound for the Loons. Tommy's been pitching two-hit ball through two innings, and Leroy Ventris, Williams and Waller, the top of the order for the Brainerd Bears, are slated for the top half of the third inning. Some big dogs on this Brainerd team. Last time we were here, we saw a couple home runs. They've got some power. I've got to believe Brainerd right now is going to try to sit back and try to manufacture something here. Plenty of time in just the third inning to do some damage. Took these teams until uh, the sixth, seventh inning last weekend in their series to get going here. Leroy Ventris batting 335 on the year. He's got three home runs. And 20 RBIs. Quickly runs the count, two and one. Tommy McCormick, 200-pounder, 6-3. Right under it for the first put out of the third inning. So Ventress retired on a fly ball to right in right field. And that brings up Ernie Williams. Well, for the second time, Ventress will fly out, flat out as well. His first right time at that. Gary Williams. Williams a fly out in his first appearance at bat as well. <laughs> Williams with a 385 average. And he quickly runs the count, 0 2 with one out here in the top half of the third inning. 
Loons won, the Bears nothing. Jamie Boyce popped one over the center field wall. He gave it a good ride. It was about 390. Two. Some, I'm sorry. To give the Loons a uh, one nothing lead. Something you may not know about Tom McCormick. Unfortunately, he has. There's a shot down the third baseline. McCamey can't come up with it. Knee over to pick it up. And that'll be a. He's gone. He's gone. What a play. Williams going for second on a, what looked to be a, a long single. He tried to stretch it into a double. And Neath with a strong arm gunned him out at second. Oster makes a terrific tag here. Well, you're going to see here. Was he safe? Was he out? Good play. Great relay. Leaf to Oster. Quick. You see how quick he got out of his glove. As I was going to mention before, McCormick, one of the only pitchers who's given up seven home runs already this year. Neef had a heck of a throw to get that one in there. He did. Was he out? <laughs> he was definitely out. There's a shot up the pitcher here off of Tommy McCormick. He seems okay. And Jackson stretches to get that one. That retires the inning. So, no runs, one hit, no errors. As we go to the bottom half of the third inning, Brainerd Bears zero, Minneapolis Loons one. Tommy McCormick took a shot off of the inside of the thigh, it looked like, uh, for the third out of that one, but uh, hopefully he'll be all right. We'll get a report from the dugout, hopefully on his condition. Well, McCormick, a survivor, got a feeling he's going to have to dig down in this one. He's taken those before. If he's going to play the big leagues, the shins are going to happen all the time. But way to control it, get it down, and still kept a nice throw. Great stretch on first base as well. Interesting right now, the Loons have so far, it seems, have taken control of this game coming over the last couple innings. You're going to look for a couple different things now uh, from the Brainerd side. Brainerd's going to want to start to spark something here. Their defense is going to look to hold the Loons. The Loons have been up to the plate for a while. They've been giving the Brainerd defense a long sit. Sometimes when you let your players sit around out in the field, they get a little bored, a little <laughs> lackadaisical sometimes. They start watching trains is what they do. <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, Darren Knight, has he, he had to take a, a break a little bit there in the last inning uh, to check out his, his hand that he stopped that line shot up the middle. It appears that he's all right. He'll probably have some swelling on that uh, that pitching hand tonight. That too, you got to start to wonder now with the quick innings going by, the shot to the hand, will it affect him coming in a couple innings? We'll got to believe the manager's watching him from the Brainerd Bears. Have to wait and see. So that brings up uh, Tommy McCormick. He's the bottom of the Minneapolis Loons batting order. He's the pitcher, of course. Pitcher, the Reaper, McCormick. So at the bottom of the third, leading things off is Tommy McCormick, Sean McCamey on deck, and Neef in the hole. Of course, pitchers do have to hit in uh, this, the North Central League. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. So Tom McCormick <laughs> sat down rather quietly. <laughs> McCormick with his, no he doesn't want me to say this, with his uh, 44 strikeout. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that kind of hurts. A backwards K if you're scoring at home. He had his eyes closed on that last pitch. Interesting about McCormick, though, seven home runs this season. <laughs> seven home runs? Seven home runs this season for McCormick. <laughs> Unless we've got some stat padding going on for I the television the, I guess broadcast. That's missing at all. Just past the diving third baseman. And Sean McCamey will have a one out single in the bottom half of the third third inning. 
Well, McCamey comes back from flying out in the first inning. Shows there, taking it same place, this time with the line drive shot. That'll bring up the natural Bobby Neath. Sean is a stealing threat, 14 stolen bases on the season. That puts him number two on the Loons roster, right behind Strong. Neef also a hometown boy. He's from Maple Grove, Minnesota. And a throw from Darren Knight. McCamey back in time. Neef went down south to play his college ball. He played down at Missouri State. They're keeping close watch on uh, Sean McCamey over there at first. He's got some speed. I like the way the infield and the outfield are cut here at Seward Field. The cross sections kind of remind you of some <laughs> of the Oakland parks. Oh, a pitch out. That's what you got to do, folks. In minor league baseball games, sometimes you just have to look around and see it all happening around you. <laughs> it's the experience of outdoor baseball. Bobby Neese's favorite food, chicken chow mein. Chicken chow mein. Chicken chow mein. I don't know where you got that one. <laughs> like I said, it's it's entertainment, folks. It's not just baseball. <laughs> Actually, chicken chow mein isn't too bad. I don't mind a little chicken chow mein every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be working in the booth with you after you had it, though. Okay. <laughs> Couple egg rolls. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. McCamey holds at first base. Darren Knight working from the stretch. Finally, he pitches to home base, home plate. And Bob Neef fouls it back. Neef, one and one the count. 225 on the season. He flied out his first time at bat as well. Looking to make something happen here. Name of the game. 291 slugging average. Will bat 18 RBIs in the season. They are keeping a close eye on McCamey over there. You'd think Carl Lewis was over there how much, uh, how many times he's thrown over there. The respect they're giving to him. Again, one of the top stolen base people in the league. Oh, a rarity. He threw to home plate. And it's one ball and two strikes. One out here in the bottom half of the third inning. Loons on top of the Brainerd Bears, one nothing. Three hits apiece for the Bears and the Loons. Of course, the difference being Jamie Boyce's dinger in the second inning. They're going to keep throwing the first as long as they're winning the battle at the plate with two strikes and one ball. They've got a few pitches to work with. And with McCamey being a stealing threat, they're going to have to go over the first quite often. Rodney digs in for the one or two count. There it is, foul back. I was about to say, you're going to see a lot of basic strategies taking place here. Your hits and your runs, your basic fundamentals of baseball, your bunts laying down the line. And again, pitchers just trying to learn exactly what they need to do to get the job done. Some have been there before, others trying to gain through experience. And What's Greg that? Olson, the best experience available in the game. True. He's teaching these kids the basics, the fundamentals of baseball, and he's doing a heck of a job. The Loon's only two and a half out of the division leading Brainerd Bears. A little over a week left in the season. So there's still hope for the Minneapolis Loon's. One and two the count. And we're going to play catch with first base again. You have to say that Mitch Zalinski's done a great job as well for the Brainerd Bears. Trying to uh, throw some nice talent together on that team playing he's, up there. He's got, the he's he got some personnel. He does. Personnel. 
So Darren Knight finding first base the more likable. Play and catch with Todd Vanek. Reminder that the loom is sponsored by Squirt. <laughs> So Bobby Neef steps back into the play. He's been up to bat for about two hours. There goes McCamey. The throw is not in time. He's in there with a stolen base. So Todd, Todd Vanek and Darren Knight playing the catch over at first and uh, the pitcher's mound to no avail. Sean McCamey comes up with a stolen base anywho. And you hear the loon calls in the background. First base by Jackpot Jackson. You see here, the old proverb, you wait long enough, and I'm <laughs> going to take it from you. And there, McCamey sliding in safe underneath the tag. Great base running so far by the loons here this evening. Bobby Neef was out on strikes on that last pitch. So that's two outs in the bottom half of the third inning. Paul Jackpot Jackson steps into the batter's box from Minneapolis loons. And we're going to have a little conference on the mound. Well, they're going to go over, as you see out there, Mitch Zolensky. He's going to talk. He's going to say, how's your hand feeling? You gave up a home run. You hit a batter. You've now given up a couple hits. How's everything feeling? Just to get a feeling of where his pitcher's at. And he's going to remain in, it looks like. No action in the Brainerd Bears bullpen at this point. So it looks as if Darren Knight will complete the inning. That... Is the bullpen right there, kids? <laughs> oh, okay, Grant. Okay, there's action. <laughs> well, there's at least a ball being tossed around. First baseman, Jackpot Jackson. You know, that has to be one of the best jobs in the world. A relief pitcher. Seventh pitcher on the roster. You get to sit in the side, get to travel with the team, get to carry the trophies. Hang out in lounge chairs. Become a celebrity. <laughs> All that intertwined, you get paid, and you do nothing. <laughs> you do nothing. You get a tan. Yeah, they're working hard. But nevertheless, got to give them some credit. They earned that spot in the roster, and they're going to call this one a block now. That one is a block. A block. All right, Don ball. Hendry making the call on that, on that move. Darren Knight, not guilty of the first one, but this one he's not going to get away with. So Sean McKamey moves on to third base, 90 feet from scoring. Well, Jackson with the double in the first inning. Warm at the plate, so to speak. That was his 15th on the season. Jackson hailing from LaGrange, Kentucky. His baseball hero is Pete Rose. Well, you can't be perfect, can you? <laughs> Jackson runs the count, one and two, with two outs here in the bottom half of the third inning. Looms on top of the Bears, one nothing. Jackson can pick up another double. He's moving to second place in the league, North Central League. On top, Jason Felis up in Regina. Regina's tearing things up this year. On deck, Pat Wright, if Paul Jackson can find a way on the base. So Darren Knight resumes the windup. And there's a shot down the first baseline fielded by Todd Vanek. He'll touch the bag for the third out of the inning, and that's all she wrote for the Loons in the bottom half of the third inning. No run on one hit, one hit. and no one errors. Hit. One left on base as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. It is the Brainerd Bears zero, Minneapolis Loons one. Thanks for tuning in tonight, folks. <laughs> Every, everybody out there who might be uh, checking out this broadcast and other broadcasts, uh, you might be familiar with Veterinary Sports Rap Productions. Again, covering exclusively jumping Johnny Montantis. Jumping Johnny Be Good. He's got a bunch of things going on down there in St. Paul, and he's done a great stir in professional boxing. Make sure you can check that out, that and other MASW Productions.
Well, what we have here in between innings in the Minneapolis Loons baseball is some wild hijinks. We've got tire racers. We've got dunk the manager. It's it's complete entertainment here for the Minneapolis Loons fans. <laughs> Now they are just going nuts. Look at that. <laughs> you know, that guy looks like somebody off of uh, the, like the Adams family or something. What do we got there? <laughs> so Uncle Fester wins the tire race for the evening. <laughs> well, the Metrodome has their scoreboard. They have their dot races on their scoreboard. I guess the Loon said we'll do the real thing. <laughs> Come down here and race the tire. Well, the Metrodome has microchips and the uh, Siebert Field has tires plus tire races. <laughs> the real thing. Wacky, kooky. Much more than a baseball game Minneapolis Loon's entertainment. Thanks for joining us tonight, folks. My name is Matt Etzel. I'm joined in the booth with Ryan Young. We're proud to bring you Minneapolis Loons professional outdoor baseball. Minneapolis Loons are on top of the Brainerd Bears tonight, one nothing. Division standings, we take a look at the east, we see Brainerd on top, 37-28. That puts them up by two and a half over the Minneapolis Loons, 34-30, and, and Marshall, 25-41. Over to the west, Regina, 35-24, tearing up the lead. Saskatoon, 30 and 34, along with Huron. Regina already locked up the title, seven and a half games ahead in the West. So Andre Johnson steps into the batter's box for the Brainerd Bears. The winner of these two games will travel to Regina. Whoever, not this game, but the series rather between Brainerd and Minneapolis. There's a fly ball by Johnson, knee under it, he makes the catch. We'll go on down to, we'll go on up rather to Regina, about 14 hours away, 15 hours away. I believe that falls in about the 12th and 13th as they start the East and the West meet for the title and championship of the North Central League. That'll bring up Pack Hatcher. Other games going on this evening, Saskatoon at Regina and Marshall at Huron. Patrick got caught trying to stretch a single into a double last time up. That was on a beautiful toss from Neef in left field to Oster. So Hatcher runs the count two and one. One out here in the top half of the fourth inning. Hatcher, the first at bat. Drawing the walk. It appears that he's going down that same route right now. Tommy McCormick still on the mound for the Minneapolis Loons. McCormick from Marshfield, Wisconsin. A hard throwing right hander. He pitched for Winona State before coming to the Minneapolis Loons. So some of the Southern Minnesota fans might be familiar with Tommy. And a 3-2 pitch, it's a curveball down low and that's ball four. So, Hatcher draws a walk. Well, Hatcher draws a walk and he draws himself into the leader First categories, base four base on balls, that's right. <laughs> 35 walks now for Hatcher on the season, needed just one more to break that 34 barrier. He'll trot down the first and pick up number five in the rankings. The third walk in the evening for Tommy McCormick. So Todd Baddick steps into the batter's box for the Rainer Bears. Interesting for drawing all the walks that he does. He has a 301 average. That was, of course, Hatcher. Big swing by Baddick. And the count's 0-2. Three fourteen for Vanek. Not much of a stranger to RBIs or doubles. Out of the leaderboard by only four. He's got ten doubles on the season. There's a swing by Vanek. Towards the gap in left center, and it's not caught. 
That's a gap here. Strong and Neef collide. Hatcher holds up at third. So a stand-up double by the first baseman, Todd Vanek. Well, he must have heard me say something about the doubles because he comes right back with the double. 360s where he hit it. One of the longer parts of the park in that alley in between center and left field. Gives himself 11 on the season, but good connections. He drives it all the way to the wall. If there was a win like there was when we were here last Saturday, that, that was out of here. That might have been out of here. So Todd Vanek chases Hatcher around to third. I don't know about this strategy. One out. So and Greg Olson calls an intentional walk. Well, Beretti's batting 291 this season. And he had a single in his first inning. He has 29 RBIs, which is one of the leaders for Brainerd. Olsen making the decision that maybe he doesn't want to give a shot to a guy who's already proved that he can hit early in this one. I suppose it's a tight ball game, loading the bases with uh, one out early in the ball game. We'll again, have to see how that works out. Again, it's not all bad because now they got they create the double play situation, and that's what Olsen is looking for. And with Card, remember we talked about Card the first time. This only his 12th appearance at the plate. A double play that went the other way last time. Olsen, some creative managing, maybe Georgia. looking a little bit to the future. We'll see how it pays off for him. Card called up from the uh, AAA league, uh, Pillager. Uh, that, of course, the T-ball league. He only has 12 at-bats, as you said before. <laughs> So the Lones will take their chances with Card with the bases juiced. Card only hitting 200 on the year. And McCamey's just going to make sure that they know which way, if it comes back to the pitcher, McCormick knows what base to take it to. Wants to clarify that. It's a pop foul, and that is going to be out of play right on top of the press box, actually. And George Perez is not going to have a play on that one. So the run down, no balls, one strike, one out. Top half of the fourth inning, bases juiced with Bears. Now this could hurt Olsen. There is one way. We don't know who Card is, where he came from. We say the T-ball league, but in all joking reality, he may get hot. Olsen's betting he won't. Ground ball off the leg of McCormick. And there's no play anywhere by the time that Jackson picks up the ball. And a fluke hit by Card right up the middle off of the shin of Tom McCormick. That's the second one that's gone off his leg. Well, again, Greg Olson had to gamble that he wouldn't get a good hit. He didn't. Unfortunately, McCormick can't get the handle on it. Jackson coming off of the first base to field that ball. Nobody had first base to cover it, so there's nobody out. Exactly. Technically, McCormick, off of the injury, should have been trying to make his way to first base. Should have shrugged it off. That's a tough play. He didn't know where the ball went. True. It could cost the Loons an out, though. So, a run comes around to score. And that is ruled a base hit. Pitcher, Derek Knight. But this will work out good for Olsen as well. Not as bad a play, maybe, coming up with the pitcher. Card again creates that double play situation between second and first. But the bases are still loaded with one out. McCormick unable to get his glove down in time to field that grounder. And Darren Knight draws two straight balls up high from Tom McCormick. McCormick's got to come in on it. He's got to challenge the pitcher on this one. Knight is batting 253. He's only got 82 hits. He does have five home runs, so he will show it at times. Again, these parks, a lot of times, outdoors, atmosphere, and conditions of the weather have a lot to do with that as well. There's a strike down the middle. McCormick has to challenge the pitcher. Darren Knight here. He can't pitch around him. He has the meat of the order coming up, and Leroy Ventress, Kerry Williams, 
and Waller. Not at all. The last thing that they want to take a look at, the Loons right now in this one with the game in control is at this point tied at one. You got to get this out. This is the biggest out for McCormick of the night so far. So it's do or die, three and one, with one out and the base is loaded. Nowhere to put any bears. It's time for McCormick to bear down, face the consequences. Knight flat out in his last at bat. There's a slow strike on the inside corner. So Darren Knight runs the count full, three and two with one out. And there's the pitch. That's a hard hit shot. Down the left field out, just hooked foul. That was fouled by about 45 feet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'd have to say he was sitting uh, on that one. The dugouts clinched their hearts and <laughs> grabbed the chest as you see a pitcher get a hold of a pitch like that. Tommy McCormick got around on that ball. That was a no-doubter. There's a pop-up. Shallow right field, right underneath it. He makes the catch. And the runners keep their bases. So two outs. McCormick avoids trouble. So it's up to Leroy Ventress, the center fielder for the Brainerd Bears. Well, Ventress batting 335. And in the second inning, he was out. Center fielder, Third Leroy inning, Ventress. He was thrown out of second. Fly to center in the first inning. There's a pitch in the dirt. Runners hold their bags as Perez made a good stop on that ball. You hear the words coming there from Greg Olson, time to bear down, McCormick. Only about 20 RBIs, the biggest threat for Ventress is his doubles. He's got 11 of them on the season, 66 hits so far. There's a little action down there at third base. He's taking a pretty good lead there. He was about halfway down the line by the time that pitch was delivered. So the Bears mixing it up on the base pass. One and one to Ventress, two outs in the top half of the fourth inning. One run already crossing the inning for the Bears. It's a tie ball game, one one. It is a little chilly out here, though. You're looking at probably, I don't know, what would you guess? Probably the about 65 degrees. About 65. Uh, feels like 35 right now. <laughs> Tell you, it's been an exceptional summer out here in Minneapolis and in the area, the whole state area, though. It's been some great weather. Finally, we've seen the sun for the first time in the last two summers. Tell me about it. There's a ground ball through the hole. Neep up with it, one run across. And runners will hold one base. So Ventress knocks across the lead run. Brainerd Bears two, Minneapolis Loons one on the benefit of Ventress's two out, base with loaded single. Nice single. Again, Ventress getting into it, driving it in and driving in another run, chucking up another RBI, but more importantly, giving Brainerd their second run in this inning. McCormick has to stop it now before the big guys really start to hurt him. There's a strike on the outside corner. So Beretti holds it third, Card at second. Check that. Vanek at third, Beretti at second, Card at first. Check that. And we have a little action in the Minneapolis Loons bullpen. Waller grounded out to first in, his, in the third inning. Ready at third, Card at second, and Leroy Ventress at first base. Again, another double threat. Waller, 11 doubles on the season so far. Oh. 
One and two, two outs here in the top half of the fourth inning. Kerry Williams at the plate. Uh, McCormick testing Waller as he puts it upstairs a little bit, right across the letters. Ken Herbeck was up there, that ball would be the other side of the fence. Uh, he loves those high balls. Yeah, he couldn't get around the base pads, though. <laughs> so. Questionable call. The fans didn't like that one, but uh, the bases are juiced. Full count, two outs. Top half of the fourth inning. Nowhere to put any bears on the base pads. So the payoff pitch by Tom McCormick. Bases, runners go. There's the pitch. A short fly ball to shallow right field right under it. Then he makes the grab. So, two runs for Brainerd on four hits and no errors. Three left on base as we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Brainerd Bears two, Minneapolis Loons one. Well, the two runs coming there for Brainerd in the last inning. It's going to make a little bit of a switch. The pressure going back now onto the Loons to produce. And they've got Eric Nelson down there in the bullpen. You see there. Eric Nelson from South High School in Minneapolis. Also a big time basketball player for South. Went to the state tournament with that team. Back in 1989. Again, you gotta like about these leagues, both Brainerd and the Minneapolis Loons. They've got some quality players, they've got some local favorites, but they've also got some people who honestly are trying to make a shot and moving up in baseball. They feel that this is the route to go. They get paid for it, plus they have an opportunity to showcase their talents and try to excel on to the next level. It's really created a lot of opportunities for locals as well. A lot of these teams drawing off of some of the top high school talent that is still searching around, and a lot of local college talent that has either graduated from places like the University of Minnesota or is not attending certain schools. A lot of good things happening here in the North Central League. Well, I tell you, Outdoor baseball has finally come back to Minnesota, and I think it's a fantastic thing. Especially with the strike going on these days, baseball's at a premium, and this is good entertainment, folks. Minneapolis Loons professional outdoor baseball. It is, and a lot of people would say this is a resurgence of baseball. Baseball's got to come back to this. It's got to come back to a game where people come to just enjoy it, sit outside. Not such a commercial money-making deal. What happened to the sport, a lot of people will say. This is literally the grassroots of baseball. Basically. A lot of old players who used to play about 20, 30 years ago say the question repeatedly now. I don't even watch baseball anymore. It's shifted so much. I don't think the players are even the same as they used to be. So Pat Wright steps in. He hits the first ball to left. Just foul. Well, Wright was out on strikes in the first. He went down looking. He quickly runs the count to 0-1. Wright, Boyce, and Strong do up for the Minneapolis Loons in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Darren Knight remains on the mound. He'll be watching his hand carefully for the rest of the game. Of course, he was shelled by a line drive. Had the presence of mind to catch it and throw it to second base to double up a loon. Looked like a slider called strike on the outside corner. One and two the count. No outs. Popped up, foul, and that'll be out of play. That's a souvenir for some lucky fan. Or a broken camera, <laughs> if you go up about another 10 feet. Uh, looks like it uh, went underneath the seats there.
Pat Wright, originally from Dover, Delaware. He played for Fort Myers in the twin system. Pat Wright runs the count, two and two. Well, no, Knight, even though he's been hitting the hand, has taken a couple shots. No stranger to innings. 86.1 innings pitched so far this year with a 3-5 and five record. There's a poke to left field. Andre Johnson under it. And that'll retire Pat Wright. Up steps. Jamie Boyce, he homered in the second inning to give the loans their only run of the game. That puts Knight at actually number two on the pitching staff for the Brainerd Bears. Again, Boise, the big home run. Who could forget that one? See if he's hot. Boyce originally from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. He played for the city team down there, the Coon Rapids Mavericks, before joining the Minneapolis Loons. And is enjoying a, a good night tonight with that homer. It's made his night. But as a batter, he wants another. He's going to go back in the dugout. He wants to prove to every player who's in there that it wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a lucky <laughs> shot, but that, in fact, he's a home run hitter. Uh, he doesn't have to prove anything to me. He's bigger than I am. Rocky Boyce lines a soft liner to shallow left field. Johnson under it for the second put out of the inning. So Rocky Boyce flies out to left for the second out. Center fielder, Kevin Strong. That brings up Kevin Strong. Kevin was hit by a pitch in the second inning. And then he was doubled off uh, second base after stealing by a fantastic play by Darren Knight. Kevin Strong, one of the stronger players in this team especially when he gets on the base pads. It's definitely somebody that Knight wants to look in the eyes and try to get out of there in a hurry. Kevin Strong can manufacture runs if he has the opportunity. Strong, another hometown hero here. He's from Minneapolis. He also played for Fort Myers of the twin system. Kevin was telling me before the game that his baseball hero is Kirby Puckett. I'd say that's pretty apropos. Considering Strong as a center fielder, plays in Minnesota. Kirby Puckett's done a lot for the game of baseball here in Minnesota. It was nice to see him sign on again with the Twins to stick around. Unfortunately, he can't fulfill that contract right now, but Darn owners. Not opting to go on to the next level is Kirby Puckett and try to lead this team for more money. So Kevin Strong goes down on strikes. And that's it for the bottom half of the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. As we go to the top half of the fifth inning, it is the Brainerd Bears 2, our own Minneapolis Loons 1. Hey, nice bike. Must have cost a bundle. Did you win the lottery? Had to report the darn thing stolen. Shh, my insurance company might hear you. Oh yeah, they're paying for this baby.
They're paying for it. Minnesota campus. Uh, Minneapolis Loons on the bottom half of uh, the scoreboard. They're losing 2-1 to one of the Brainerd Bears. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Brainerd just coming off of a big inning in the fourth inning. Two runs on four hits. But they stranded three runners in that inning. Thanks for joining us. My name is Matt Etzel. I'm joining the booth with Ryan Young. We're proud to bring you real baseball on real grass under the real sky. I guess you could call it the real thing. This is the real thing down here, and it's another event that you can come and check out in the metro area and see, support, promote people from the area, and support baseball in particular. A lot of people, including Caleb, Caleb Gaston, real active in the Minneapolis city in youth baseball, has talked a lot of times about how baseball doesn't get all the coverage and respect that it deserves. Of course, Metro Area Sports Rap Productions and Hoochie Maguchi Productions trying to make sure that baseball is taken care of just as the rest of them. So Tom McCormick resumes the mound for the Loons. Faces Casey Waller. Waller sends a shot to left center. Tommy Neef racing over. He makes the grab. Neef showed he's shown some pretty good range out there in left field. McCormick staying in there. Olsen has opted to keep McCormick in. It's a learning experience going into the fifth inning now to see whether or not he can keep his composure, get his victory, what will happen. He's down 2-1 to one right now. Brainerd on top, of course. But McCormick, a little concerned. McCormick has given up some long balls as of recently. Nice catch by Leaf. Let's watch it and see. Andre Johnson steps in. He's one for two on the evening. He flew out the left in the fourth as well. Got to like Johnson as an outfielder, 317 average. He's got big stats across the board. 10 homers, 45 RBIs, and again, the big stolen bases. That has a lot to do with the inexperience of the outfielders and the inconsistency of the pitching. That's a shot down the left field line, just foul. Andre Johnson runs the count, two and one. One out here in the top half of the fifth inning. As well, a lot of these parks that they're playing in are college parks. College parks created for hitters, deep alleys, in the places where you need them. There's a ground ball in the hole. Boyce up with it. Over to Jackson. Just in time, he got him. Andre Johnson called out by inches. That is a heck of a play by Jackson. A beautiful stretch. We're going to have a little rhubarb here. Sit back and enjoy the fireworks, folks. <laughs> The Bears are not happy about that one. Well, the Bears maybe have felt like the calls have gone the other way the whole game. The Loons have got a lot of good calls in this one. I think it has a lot to do with the placing of the officials as much as it has to do with the city itself. Well, we can see here. Was he safe? Was he out? The official again right above first base, so he's got a perfect look. Here's your view from the reverse with the official. He was safe. <laughs> he was safe, clear and plain. Well, hey, that's the nature of the game, folks. You win some, you lose some. Some you get screwed on. So, hey, it happens, okay? Swalinski. And the benefit of the loons this time, next time it might go the other way. And Swalinski just trying to plead his case. Again. Yeah, it looks like he was safe to me. There's the ball. His foot's on the bag. You win some, you lose some. All that jazz. There's a fly ball <laughs> lifted by Pat Hatcher. Needs there to get it for the third out of the inning. So, no runs. Not a hit, not an error. As we go to the bottom half of the fourth, fifth inning. The Brainerd Bears, two. The Minneapolis Loons, one. 
Thanks for joining us here at uh, Seabird Field. Minneapolis Loons 1, Brainerd Bears 0. We'll be right back after this. I got a sweet stereo that'll fit that car just perfectly. Make me an offer? Come on, I can get it dirt cheap. It's only a stereo. my hands on a 91 Corvette. It's yours for 500. Baseball. Brainerd Bears on top of the loons, two to one. Mike Oster leading off the bottom half of the fifth inning. It'll be Oster Perez and the pitcher McCormick, unless manager Greg Olson decides to replace McCormick for a pinch hitter. Oster takes the ball, ball one. Well, last La Oster. Not Laster, Oster rather, lined out to uh, the first in the second inning. Actually, check that. He lined out to the pitcher. Oster was the one that uh, had a shell shock right up to uh, That's the pitcher's right. hand. Just about took that bare hand right off. How could we forget? But Darren Nett had the presence of mind to catch the ball and turn and fire to second to double up another loon. I stand corrected, folks. <laughs> So Oster runs the count two and one. No outs. There's a foul on the left field line. Just out of play. Oster batting 225 on the season so far. Again, a lot of differences going on now in baseball than in the past. Uh, pitching taking a little bit of a dive through all of baseball, whether it's high school, college, or professional right now. Again, not a lot of big pitchers coming out. Hitters becoming the forte. There's a ground ball to first. Good cover by the pitcher, Darren Knight. And one down here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Stepping in for the lose, George Perez, the catcher. Catcher, George Perez. Perez grounded out the first in the second inning. He's over one. He's hitting a whopping buck fifty. <laughs> hey, he's a great catcher, okay, folks. Hasn't done too bad a job behind the plate today, though. Well, you want to know what kind of schedules these teams are on. Minneapolis won yesterday, 5-4 to four in 11 innings at Saskatoon. That's a foul straight back. That was right in my kitchen. I'm glad that screen's there. Perez fired in a 1-for-32 slump. I'd say he's due. Looney hanging out here. If you come down to these games, you're going to see a big loon walking around. You might even hear the loon call from time to time. He kind of looks like a loon, kind of a cross between a loon and a, <laughs> and a mosquito, if you ask me. But 
But they have a good time down here at Seabird Field. George Perez runs the count one and two with one out here. Knight can't seem to get that curveball in the zone. But his fastball is pretty effective. Are you from this area, Matt? I'm from Mankato, Minnesota, originally. Rich baseball tradition down there. There's a ground ball towards third. Up with it over first. He's off the bag. He's in there. Hatcher, Hatcher's float, pulled Vanek off the bag. And Perez is in with, no, that's not going to be scored a hit. That's the first error of the game, folks. Hatcher's throw pulled him off the bag. Well, you're going to see here Perez from the get-go running hard. And the throw just off the bag a little. He's got to reach to grab it. Great instinct by the first base. Now he's going to try to go for the bag. Misses. He couldn't get back in time. And he tries the karate trip <laughs> down the first baseline. Nice run by Perez. Well, Todd Vanek is not Bruce Lee, and he couldn't get back to first base. So the Loons have something going. A runner on with one out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No balls, no strikes. Olsen now is going to make the decision to replace McCormick in the next inning on the pitching side. And so in comes Zebert. So Zebart. And the Bears have a little action in the bullpen. Yeah, they're going to look to make that pitching change as well. Kind of both teams right on par. This one sensing to be a pitching battle. Not a lot of runs in this one. They better get the bullpens ready. So Zebarth steps in. He takes low ball one. Zebarth batting 235 this season. He's basically a hitter, about 12 RBIs. But again, a threat on the base pads if he gets on. The number three threat on this team for the Loons. So the tying run is on first base with one out via the error by Hatcher. One oh pitch fouled straight back. Zebarth runs it one and one. Jesse Zebarth, originally from Cambridge, Minnesota. He played for the Briarcliff Chargers. Ch check that, Changers. Where are the Briarcliff Changers? How do you think they came up with that name right? I bet they're a bank. A lot of interesting names in this league. I kind of said the same thing when I heard Minnesota's going to be called the Timberwolves for basketball. <laughs> Glad to hear... The Timberwolves are going to be back in town. Glad to see they finally got the coaching decisions taken care of. They're ready to rock. Of course, uh, Glenn Taylor taking over uh, the helm of the front office over there at the Timberwolves. It's going to give a different, interesting perspective. Of course, Taylor used to be involved with the Senate here locally, so he's got a lot of background. Nice to see a local person coming in, taking care of that team. Also, interesting to see the Vikings great season maybe coming up here. We've got some great sports coming up. The Vikings are looking to put in a great year. One of the best backfields around right now in the NFL. Well, the Loons had a play going on there. George Perez with a little bit of speed. But it was fouled straight back by Zebarth. You mentioned the Vikes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Vikes. Vikes should be year. interesting. Finally have landed with they would say they tried to land their big-time quarterback once before. Wasn't successful. Tried to bring out the quarterbacks. Finally, they dropped the cash, bring in the big guy, the moon. It's nice to see a quarterback who can throw over 40 yards. Yeah, yeah, but, but I just hope he doesn't turn geriatric on us halfway through the season. <laughs> see Dennis Green's face popping up all over the cities as well. He's got a radio show right now as well as a bunch of different things going on.
lot going on here in the North Central League. They're getting ready for that big trip up to Regina. That's a 14-hour ride up there. That's a pop fly. And two down in the inning. The runner holds on first. And that leaves it up to the top of the order, Sean McCamey. Shortstop, Sean McCamey. Well, McCamey's the runner. And took advantage of that when he stole second after he singled. Then advanced a third on that Bach. McCamey flew to right in the first and singled to right in the third. He's one for two. Would have been nice to be able to get Zebarth on base there for Olsen with the game of three potential runners on base with the meat of his order coming up. There's a swing and a miss. Oh, one to count, two outs here. The line on McCormick, he's through for the night. Four innings pitch, six hits, two runs, two earned runs. At number four is Sean McCamey for Minneapolis. Right behind Dennis Hood of Regina, Todd Vanek of Brainerd in hits, and Tommy Griffith. McCamey stands with 71 hits so far this season. Check that. McCormick had five innings pitched. Six hits and two runs given up. Not a bad outing for Tommy. He being lifted here in the bottom half of the fifth inning for a pinch hitter. McCamey tied for second in triples. He's got four so far this season. There's a shot by McCamey. That's deep, deep, deep. Get out of here. That's off the wall. That'll be a stand-up double, maybe more. Runner on third. He's in there standing up. This ball game's tied. Well, you see there McCamey doing exactly what we just talked about. And that is driving the ball forcefully out to the wall. Great shot by McCamey. He wanted to round second on that one. He wanted third. He wanted third. He saw his eyes turn, but great relay. Brainerd played it well off the wall. Take a look here again. There's the shot. Right off the wall. Good relay, though, by Brainerd to keep McCamey to only a double as he chucks up another RBI. Andre Johnson with a good arm out there in left field. Holding McCamey to a double. And the Loons have tied it up here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. It's two to two. 11 doubles, 25 RBIs now for McCamey. So Bobby Neef steps into the batter's box for Minneapolis Loons. Neef flew out to left in the first inning and he struck out swinging in the third. He's 0 for two. Again, even more favorable for the Loons. McCamey's speed on the base pads. A single here scores a run. Bobby Neef looked like he was trying to call time there. No harm done, though. That's a called ball, ball two. I don't know about that. Bob was trying to call time on that. Time for Neef to dig in. Again, interesting, there's still action in the Brainerd bullpen. I'm surprised myself after that last tag by McCamey. But nevertheless, the manager Zelensky is going to leave his pitcher in there. And so here's the chance for Bobby Neef to drive in the go-ahead run with McCamey perched about a top second. There's the ball inside, three and one to count, two outs here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. What you got to look for for a pitcher at this stage in the game also is his ability to throw it inside, still throwing it hard, and still keeping it down. So he's not giving up a lot of those big run balls. That may explain why Zwadlinski has left him in there. So the bases. The count's full with two outs here, and uh, the runner will be going on the pitch. Minneapolis and Brainerd 
must end the streak. Both six and four in their last ten games, and both coming off a two-game winning streak. A lot at stake here this evening, as well as uh, first and second place battle. Ball four high. So Bobby Neef draws a walk from Darren Knight. That's the first walk of the night for Darren. Paul Jackpot Jackson, the switch hitter. He could bat from either side of the plate depending on what the Bears decide to do with the pitching here. Looks like they're probably gonna opt to keep him in there at this point in time. A lot of that has to do with uh, lefty versus a lefty. They might want to wait till the next one right to try to make a switching change. With two outs. So is gonna give him an opportunity to see whether or not he can put it away here in the fifth inning. Paul Jackpot Jackson steps in for the loans. Jackson had a two-bagger in the first inning, the left field. He grounded out to in the third. He's one for two. Nice strike. Again, still throwing it low, still keeping it with the heat. One and one to count. Two outs here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Still able to pick whatever corner he wants to go to. One run already across for the Loons in this inning. Looking for more. There's a strike down the middle, one and two to count. Paul Jackson befuddled by that one. Well, again, Jackson, earlier in this game, gained his 15th double. Move him into the leaderboard. Atop the leaderboard, rather. Second, at least in the top echelon. McCamey takes the lead from second. Need from first. And the pitch. <laughs> what happened to that keeping it low, huh? <laughs> Well, that's what happens. So the count runs even, two and two, with two outs here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. It's going to take him in. This is a great pitch right now. This is where you can see if he's tired or not. This is the pitcher's pitch on a twos across the board. He's got one to play with. Headhunt. That's a little bit of chin music. Darren Knight coming in close. I don't think that was intentional. The crowd didn't like that one. Again, we said on the two and twos across the board, that's the pitch he has to opt. Again, getting away from him a little bit, maybe showing a little bit of the fatigue on the mound right now. The crowd didn't like it. Jackson didn't like it. And I didn't like it. Full count, three, two, two and outs. The runner's going, and it's ball four. The bases are juiced. So Paul Jackson draws a second straight walk off of Darren Knight. And that moves the runners up 90 feet. So the go-ahead runs at third in Sean McKinney. Bob Neath at second, Paul Jackson at first. Right fielder. And that brings up Pat Wright. Zeus. Right. Pat Wright was called out on strikes, went down looking, and he lined out to left in his last at bat in the fourth inning. Five homers for right. The high pipe up. Todd Vanek underneath it. He's got to watch out for that. Okay. So, there's one run on two hits and no errors. The Lowe's tie the ball game. It's the two to two. So, from Siebert Field on the University of Minnesota campus. It's Brainerd, Lo Brainerd Bears, too. Minneapolis Loons, too. And we'll be back right after this. 